We've all likely been told before that it is impossible to divide by zero. It is indeed a common theme in our education that dividing by zero always yields an undefined solution. We students are sometimes told not to question dividing by zero, such that it becomes an accepted fact that any number divided by zero is non-existent. You may be able to guess what I'd like to do in this upcoming series. In mathematics, the goal is never to accept whatever system you're used to just because other people say so. Uh, mathematicians themselves think critically, and they have a natural curiosity about their subject and uh, questioning established rules. Uh, but in this series, I will teach you one approach to dividing by zero. It is linked with my favorite kind of geometry, known as the projective plane, which you may have heard me describe earlier. Uh, by any rate, I hope you enjoy this pilot episode of Lies They Tell You in Math Class. The usual argument as to why we are unable to divide by zero goes as thus. Say we have some number, some real number k, and divide it by zero, and set this value equal to a. The problem here is that if we were to solve for k in this case, we would say that k is equal to 0 times a for some real numbers k and a. Really, for any real numbers k and a. However, clearly this does not work, because in this case, 0 times anything would be equal to 0 and k must equal 0. Now, the first thing you should know about the projective plane is that there are multiple approaches um, to this kind of geometry. Uh, but the simplest way of uh, visualizing the projective plane would be Imagine you have the uh, Euclidean space, um, uh, just essentially a plane, right? Uh, yeah. You can think of it as an x and y axis. The approach to the projective plane uh, includes both this Euclidean plane uh, with x and y axes, plus one point that we define at infinity. And what this means in the uh, plane is that eventually, if you go infinitely far off in any direction, you'll get to infinity. And speaking topologically, the sort of surface or, or geometry that is created through this process is actually a sphere. And now this discovery leads to a, uh, a new sort of diagram for the protective plane, which I have right on the back here. And it is known as the Riemann sphere. Now we have one point at infinity right here, and zero at the other end. And uh, this particular Riemann sphere I uh, prefer uh, as a model for the projective plane, uh, because it includes basically the complex numbers. It has one here, negative one on the other side, for its, um, its inverse, so to speak. Speaking additively, that is. Uh, and then we have i, the imaginary unit, uh, defined as the square root of negative one. And then on the other side of the sphere, negative i. And, uh, basically any number can be built from this sphere. Uh, num another way of, yet another way of visualizing the projective plane is 
just a uh, more basic model, which is a circle. And you have zero here. And then one. And then, uh... I'll, I'll put dot dot dot, meaning that the numbers going in this direction are increasing. Until you get to the other side, which, which we say is a point at infinity. Now, uh, this is sort of counterintuitive at first that a point can be at infinity but this is how we're defining it in the projective plane it's very very interesting and what this means if you think about it is that because we can go in the other direction say negative one uh you know negative two negative three dot 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 and we can also go in this direction it creates a circle where you can go around to infinity and then so to speak, cross infinity and enter the negative numbers. So that's a very, very interesting um, analysis of the projective plane. And uh, you will learn the importance of using the projective plane later in this uh, course. Um, I'll, I'll tell you now, it is very useful to use the projective plane in algebra. Um, for example, when we study elliptic curves, which I have been reading up on over the past couple of months. Um, it is a very, very interesting topic. Um, and not just elliptic curves, but other functions. Um, and we'll see more examples of this later, but uh, this is the general gist of the projective plane. Uh, please feel free to ask me anything or give input. Um, and... I'll see you in the next video.